All right, let's talk about Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals who are able to finally get a win here in the 2024 season, starting off 0-3. And hey, as bad as the start to this year has been, they were 1-3 last year and while they ended up missing the playoffs, they were able to get back into it and probably would have made the playoffs had Burrow stayed healthy. So let's talk about what they did well in this game, especially offensively. Because I do think to some degree that, uh, you know, the offense has honestly played pretty well. Kind of the horrible defensive start to the year for Cincinnati is taken away from the fact that outside of week one, Burroughs played very well this season. Some of it is just stuff like this where what's going to happen here is it's going to be a zone coverage concept. And it's actually T. Higgins who's running the route that you see on the screen. Watch how when this play begins. Okay, it's not wide open, right? I mean, there definitely is a window, but you're going to have to get it there quickly because there are several Carolina Panthers kind of hanging around who could come over and make a play if you don't get the ball there quickly enough. However, look at Burrow. I mean, he's already in the throwing motion. In fact, the ball is already almost out of his hands. He's getting rid of the football quickly, which is something that's a real positive trait with Burrow. I know the criticism of him is that he takes too many sacks, and while it's not untrue, there are times when he holds onto the ball too long. When he has a window, he doesn't miss it. He gets rid of the ball very quickly. Watch him get the ball to Higgins just in time for that to be a completion. So again, I think a lesser quarterback doesn't get the ball there in time when you're not able to get that conversion. Now it's third and seven as opposed to converting it and making it a first and ten. This play was a very good one by everyone involved. It's a third down and three and for the Panthers. They're showing blitz, but they're going to drop back into a zone coverage. For Jamar Chase, you see the route on the screen. Just this over the middle route. Again, nothing too fancy. Burrow's going to take the snap, and he's going to, you know, be patient here. He times this well, understands the coverage, gets the ball over to Chase, who is very much open in this scenario. So, again, not the highest degree of difficulty play from Burrow, but this is really where Jamar Chase is going to shine. Watch as Burrow does make an accurate throw, and Chase somehow gets around all this, uh, you know, tackles. He gets all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. I can't let the play uh, I can't let the clip play for too long, or it'll get copyright claimed. But he, you know, runs by everyone, gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Incredible stuff here by Jamar Chase, but still good stuff from Burrow. Right, puts the ball in the position where for Chase he can catch it and continue running, so doesn't have to slow down. Is able to, you know run after the catch and pick up yards. Yards after the catch isn't just the wide receiver stat, although really good stuff here from Chase. This play was another good Jamar Chase play. Again, what makes the Bengals so deadly when they're at their best is the way they can win on the outside. You see Jamar Chase, it's not a go route, it's this curl route, but again, we remember that, you know, Jamar Chase's rookie season, it was basically a wake-up call for everyone of, oh, hey, you can't leave this guy one-on-one -on -one against any corner, I don't care how good he is, or he's going to beat you down the field. So if you are in a cover three zone like this, you have to make sure you're not getting beat down the field. So because of this, when Burrow takes the snap, there's a lot of space given up that right here, there's just a window for Chase to make this catch. I mean, Burrow doing a good job of, again, these guys have chemistry so well. Obviously, they played in college together, you know, totally on the same page here. Burrow hits Chase. They're able to pick up a decent game, get past the first down marker. Again, the way they can just hit on these plays consistently is really what makes this such a deadly offense when all things are you know, working properly. And, you know, having T. Higgins back is a huge part of this. Because going over here, this is a third down and five situation. The you know Panthers are going to be in a man coverage concept right here. So, okay, typically you want to look towards Jamar Chase. But here, that's T. Higgins' route. And again, sometimes you'll do things like you'll double team Jamar Chase or you'll put your best corner on Chase, you know, do, uh, do things de defensively to try and take him out of the play. But that's where having T. Higgins comes in really matters. Again, you see kind of the exact same thing happen where Burrow's going to take the snap. He makes this throw. The you know Carolina corner is playing a bit off. And again, when you get easier matchups as well, although this is J.C. Horn, this isn't an easy matchup. This is just a good route by Higgins and Horn maybe being a bit too cautious here with only 46 seconds left in the, in the half. Watch Burrow get the ball to Higgins. Again, got to give credit to Burrow on these plays too. That's part of why I think Burrow can sometimes become underrated in a sense is that a lot of what he does is designed to make the job look easy, right? Getting the ball there quickly you look at this play live and you're like, oh, wow, great job by T. Higgins. He got wide open. But you kind of don't think about the fact that part of why he was so open was because Burrow hit him at the perfect time. So that all factors in. 
And then there's just stuff like this, uh, where it's going to be a man coverage concept. It's Andre Osavas who is running this route. I hope I said that correctly. The uh, number 80 for the Cincinnati Bengals. And again, this is shortly after that conversion. Uh, I believe it was the next play. 43 seconds left. No timeouts. So you'd love to get a chunk play here. Obviously, you're not that far away from field goal range. But you, you want a touchdown, ideally. So if a chunk play is available, you'll take it. Panthers are in a cover two man though. So chunk play is going to be tough. Basically Higgins and Chase are both going to be doubled here. So you need to look for a third option. You're going to see that Burrow takes the snap. Osavas is winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup, which again is really important. I mean, you can only double team two guys unless you're going to only rush three. So because of this, you often need a third guy to be able to win. Tyler Boyd was that guy for a while. Here is Osavas. There is a window. But also watch this throw from uh, Joe Burrow. I mean, that is great stuff. Unfortunately, Osavas got banged up a little bit. But, uh, you know, really good stuff here from Joe Burrow to pull that off. Again, some of the throws he makes are really impressive. They are. We can get over to the interception. This is going to be a third down and five situation, and I don't even really need to break down the concept itself because that, that's really less important because this play isn't going to work as designed. To set up a situation, though, you know, you're up 10 points right here with, uh, you know, 11.44 left. A field goal is nice. I think there is definitely some logic behind. It's not the worst idea in the world to take a bit of a chance to try and go up three scores, but again, Three points does help you, right? It forces the Panthers to have to score two touchdowns to take the lead as opposed to a touchdown and a field goal to tie. Not to mention, you have time left of your own. Another field goal could make it a 16-point lead. So, like, all that factors in. But when this play begins, you're going to see that, you know, quick pressure here for Burrow. He gets around the pressure. That stuff was very good. Uh, and he's going to, you know, fire it down the field. And you see right here, I mean, you might be wondering, well, where's, what's happening here? Where's the guy he's trying to throw the football to? Well, it goes right to a Panthers defender. I think there was just a miscommunication. It's one of those weird things where when you do have a play breakdown like this, it's always difficult because, you know, I mean, these aren't things you exactly practice. So you might be thinking, hey, uh, if Jamar Chase stays over the middle, I'm going to have a big completion and we're going to get the first down and then we'll get the touch touchdown shortly after. This is great. The issue is, you know, Jamar Chase might be thinking, hey, if I get towards the corner of the end zone, I can get a touchdown. Let me go do that. So, like, you, you're never on fully on the same page. You know, these kind of, uh, you know, backyard football type situations, bad things can happen. If you want to blame Burrow uh, or Chase for this play, I suppose you can. I think it's also totally reasonable to say, hey, this is kind of a, a bit of a bad break as well for these two guys not being on the same page. So this was the one interception on an otherwise really good day offensively for the Bengals. The offense continues to roll. I mean, I thought they played well against the Kansas City Chiefs to put up 25 against a really good defense there, uh, you know, put up 33 against Washington. Their defense literally couldn't get a stop, but they still had a good day there. Another 33 against the Panthers. I think you're hoping if you're a Bengals fan, you don't have to keep putting up 30 plus points to win games but hey you finally got a win you're in an okay position they play Baltimore next week that's going to be a big game but yeah those are kind of my thoughts on the Bengals what are yours let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching